Hello everyone, this is Free Name on YouTube and today I'm going to be looking at, which I've seen before in the field, in use, and didn't seem too bad actually, and for the price um, the performance seemed alright, so I'm going to be having a look at what's in here, then there'll probably be another video uh, linked in the description about the web interface of these mesh Wi-Fi devices and um, also probably another video about the initial setup of them um, and benchmarking. So this is the Macusis available on Amazon in the UK and probably other things. Halo H70X AX1800 home Wi-Fi system claims to cover 6,000 square feet or 550 square uh, meters or is that cubed? No, square meters. Um, and they're quite nice little devices it seemed like. Um, not too plasticky and rubbish and uh, the performance seemed alright when I saw them last but I don't quite remember just how good it was so let's find out. This is interesting there's a sticker on the box which says three year warranty TP Link UK Limited. I did see that colour and thought that was very TP Link coloured. So maybe this has something to do with TP Link. I'm just going to have a quick look on the internet. There's not much on it on the internet, but there are some things which say Mercusis by TP Link, and then there's some other review that says you might not know that Mercusis is a TP Link brand. So that's um, certainly news to me and the TP-Link uh, deco stuff is is very good so in the terms of setting up mesh stuff you've got Netgear Orbeez which work well when they're set up but are a nightmare to administer any change you make takes like five minutes they take ages to boot they uh, when you add another node the other ones can drop off and need factory resetting it's just uh, drives me mad um, but when they're set up they are reliable. Then you've got the uh, Zyxel Maltese which are just terrible and very unreliable. They work again initially, go wrong and then you can never get them to work again. Um, and what other ones are there? The BT Whole Homes, which, pre which one particular model was very good, the original model, and then the rest were massively unreliable. Um, the TP-Link Decos seem like the best of the bunch, um, very reliable and also fairly easy to set up as well. But let's um, get unpacking and set them up. What other stuff does it say about it? Wireless, we've got uh, 1.2 gigabits per second on 5 gigahertz and 574 megabits per second on 2.4 gigahertz. Target wake time, interesting. WPA3, which I wouldn't really recommend turning on unless you know that all of your stuff in your house plays well with WPA3. Beamforming, access point mode rather than being a router. Parental controls, which would be interesting to give that a go as well. Three gigabit ports per Halo unit. And control via an app. Whether that app control is a, a blessing or a curse, I would say it's probably a curse. But... There we are. Not much packaging material between the top of the box and the, uh, the devices within, but there we go. The manual design does look a bit like TP-Link. For those that do want to see the manual, if you've lost yours and you can't find it online, I'm just going to whiz through this, pause the video if there's something you want to read. I'm only going to go through the English section. So useful things probably for this will be the LED status, that's what that means. And then we're on to uh, immediately onto other languages. So nothing useful there. A bit of compliance stuff, GNU stuff to do with software licensing, and Wi-Fi six. Basically saying make sure that your devices are up to date and not rubbish, because compatibility with Wi-Fi six can be a bit of an issue. We have three Mercusis boxes. And within the box, there are three power supplies and one yellow Ethernet cable. Very 
some sticky tape on this outer packaging and it's open. So device looks like a fairly unobtrusive white box with a single LED on it. Above it it says Halo, which you can't really see in the reflection maybe there, Halo, just about. Top, we've got an air vent on the side, not a lot. On the other side, not a lot. On the underside we've got a label which gives you its model number, its power rating is 12 volts, 1 amp, and MAC address serial number and that's it. Interestingly no uh, unique password on the label. Uh, maybe. Well, it does have a unique SSID. Be interesting, I wonder if the other one in the pack has the same SSID or a different one. Let's have a quick look. I don't think I'm really going to open this one in the same way that I was supposed to. Just going to rip it open. There we go. Right. Labels on the underside. They do have different SSIDs. That one ends in uh, 7C. This one ends in 9.4. Right, then on the back of the device, we have the power port, a reset button, and three gigabit WAN, or potentially reconfigured for LAN ports. And then the final one. There we go, let's plug one of them in. The power supply for the UK is that standard kind of barrel jack thing and the specs on the plug say, I can see it, 12 volts and 1 amp which should obviously match the device that we're powering. This one's got a model number of P120100-2D1. Undo the twisty tie and let's plug it in. I'll do the middle one. So immediately the power lights come on green might need to turn down the exposure and wait for it to boot up. Slightly interesting that there's no um, manual at all with this, like a quick start manual. There's this one page quick installation guide, which I think, yeah, it's just literally page one is English, page two is Dutch, etc. So uh, get started, download the Mercusys app, open and sign up with an email address. Okay, we're Blinking kind of blue or uh, teal kind of colour. The manual says pulsing blue, the halo is setting up. So, oh no, sorry, the halo is ready for setup. So, I now do need either the app or what I would really like would be to not use an app because apps are generally very, very irritating. Um, I will see whether we can use a laptop. And let's see what kind of setup we can do if we don't have the app and we don't have a mobile phone. I'm going to plug that into the middle of the three. And I haven't been given an IP address. So it does look like we will probably need to use the app. I suspect the app will connect via Bluetooth to this and then it will set it up to work. It does look very frustratingly like this is only possible to set it up using an app. Okay, it does run a web server. Let's go to it 
and see whether we can log in and set it up. No. There is only the option to set it up through the Mercusys app. That's very frustrating for me because I think not being able to do diagnostics and other things on a computer is very frustrating. Um, I would much rather that it supported both the uh, a web admin interface and an app so that the people who don't have proper computers can use an app and the people that have a computer can go in and bypass all of the generally quite slow setup processes that uh, apps bring to the table. We will try and download the app and go through the setup. Right, let's see what we can do. Mercusis get so we've downloaded and installed the Mercusis app. Let's press open and see what it talks us through. I'd like to send you notifications, I'll come back to that. We'd like to find devices connected on your network, we'll definitely need to allow that. Send notifications, no thank you, don't really want to be given that. So I've given it local network permissions, I don't want to join, so you don't have to accept this one, their customer improvement program, which will take data from your phone, but we do need to accept the terms of use. Ah, oh, great. So everything requires an account these days. So let's sign up an account. Automatically ticks signing up to the newsletter, which I'm pretty sure is not the way it should work in the UK, or at least under GDPR. Uh, right, we need to activate the account, which means I need to go and find the email that they've sent. So I've approved that on my other device. Activate and log on. Turn on Face ID, which I guess means you wouldn't need to type in the password to go into the app, but I, uh, I don't have Face ID enabled on the phone anyway. Uh, paint your home and Wi-Fi, let's begin. We've got a Halo apparently, so let's do that. We've given it local network permissions earlier. Um, yes. Power off the modem, don't really see why, but anyway, it's, it's unplugged from my network at the moment. Next. Plug in your devices, so that's plugged into the mains, and then it's saying plug into the router, check the modem is on, internet LED is stable, wait for the LED to pulse blue, which it is, so at this point it's asking me to plug it back into my network, so I will do that. want to check where it thinks you should plug it into. So it wants you to plug it into the one that is the furthest from the power, so I will I'll do that. Oh, another nice thing to note is they do have status LEDs. Quite often really low cost devices like this don't have Ethernet status LEDs, so it's quite nice that, uh, that it does. So LEDs pulsing blue, let's see what this does. I'd like to join this Wi-Fi network, yes. So we're back into the office. So I need to change the MAC address. Let's see what that does. Yeah, you can clone a MAC address, which is uh, quite a good function. Uh, back. What other options do we have, actually? L2TP, which might be useful for Andrews and Arnold customers in the UK. You could use these as, a, as an L2TP host so that you've got your normal internet and then anything that connects to this will go over the L2TP. Uh, PPTP as well is a fairly old VPN um, 
protocol that some VPN providers still support and static IP and PPPoE. So anyway, we'll carry on with dynamic. And it now wants you, rather than using the default name and password, well, it doesn't even have a password, but rather than using the default name, it wants um, you to set up your Wi-Fi. So I'm going to call this Mercusys test with the password internet12. And I presume this will now, the app will prompt me to connect to that new Wi-Fi network because um, I assume that the default Mercusys name that was being transmitted by this is going to go. The light's gone solid white, which means uh, the halo is registered and is well. Connect to your Wi-Fi network, join. So that's now changing from the temporary Mercusys network to the one that I've called and um, given the password. Halo is now up. Please connect all devices to the Halo network for a better connection. Add more Halos. Power up the other Halos. They will automatically join the mesh network within two minutes, which is interesting, um, considering they are from the same pack. But there's nothing to indicate that they're from the same pack, so um, how they join is a little bit worrying. It would be interesting to have three entirely separate packs, or three from entirely separate packs, to see uh, just how they do or don't cope with automatically joining, because, you know, to, in, the, in the quest to make things easy for customers, it possibly makes things very easy for um, network compromise as well. Anyway, let's uh, plug the other two in as well. So that one's on. I'm going to put that one up upright so you can see it's uh, LED. And we'll do the final one as well. So that is also plugged in. Uh, see how long they take and how they get on. So I do know about that. Got it. We've got one node, one client, which is this phone. And uh, we'll see how long it takes for these other two to join in that same network. flashing turquoise or uh, blue which means pulsing blue is ready for setup and uh, that one has also started doing it so we'll see how long until they then uh, join this other one okay interesting has gone solid blue and which probably means it's in the set and it's gone white there we go this up here still says one node and I'll see whether we need to do a drag down to oh no there we go second node has joined and we just got to wait for this one as well. That one's also gone solid now and should go white and I would then also expect it to appear. There, three nodes. The map's gone a little bit mad. <laughs> so it's gone from being uh, horizontal to vertical and there's a um, 
managed to muck it. Oh, there we go, it sorts itself out again now. Now this one, the first one to connect, seems to have a uh, a problem. I wonder what the exclamation mark means. With a red line and an ex exclamation mark, but it still um, appears to be working. I don't know, it sorted itself out. Let's just check whether it was to do with the orientation, but I would not expect it to be. So there we go. That is the initial unpacking and setup of these Mercusys devices. There will now be another video which will be me going through as much stuff as I can find on the Mercusys app and uh, all the settings within that. So if you're interested in that, click on the link in the description. And hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, it'll be really helpful to me. If you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel, you don't need to have the video notification switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. I also do need to do some performance testing. So let's connect to the Mercusys network and see what speeds I can get. It does mean changing over phones to a phone that I know can cope with a gigabit over the Wi-Fi. I'm connected to Office, which is this one, which is the one which has an Ethernet back to the rest of the network. So we've got the Pixel 8, which is over here, connected to the Halo, which is called Office, which is one that's Etherneted in. And a bit like the TP-Link Deco, we get speed readings off of these devices as well. I'm now ready to run a speed test. I don't have a gigabit upload on my broadband, so this is going to be a speed test across the WAN, so through the Wi-Fi from this uh, telephone into the Mercusis. Um, node here, out of the Ethernet port, and through the network cable, and to my server that's sitting just above my head. So wireless performance, we can get 800 megabits per second, and over here on the app it also shows, it's a bit delayed, but it did show 700 megabits per second. Now the upload is showing 400 there, and over here we're getting about 500 megabits per second. So we're definitely going through that. So the performance when you're right next to one of these devices is on a uh, Wi-Fi 6 enabled, or in fact this phone can do Wi-Fi 7, um, is about 800 megabits per second, which for the price is uh, for this mesh system, and that seemingly it's made by TP-Link is uh, pretty good. And a good old Wi-Fi randomization of performance. Second test has dropped down to uh, 634. I wonder if it's slightly to do with the location of stuff. Let's move these around. Also, let's double check that I'm still connected to yeah, the, the office node. And let's do that again. Yep. Yeah back up to 700 or nearly 800 megabit, 750. So all a bit variable, can reach 800 megabits per second. That tests 740 or 750. And uh, we had one test that was in the low 600s. Wow, <laughs> we've actually hit 900 megabits per second. So uh, that's impressive. And as with wireless, there's no, nothing's changed. You can see I haven't moved anything from that last test. And suddenly we're getting, what's that, 200 megabits more? Or maybe 100 megabit, 150 megabits more than we got in the earlier test. So just wireless is, uh, is so finicky. It's very convenient, but just very, very finicky in uh, its performance. So that's through the main node. And we're obviously very, very close to the main node here. So what I'm going to do now is move these other nodes to different places in the house and then we'll see what performance we get through the additional nodes. So here we are in a very crowded kitchen and the node here is the first node, so the node that we can see on the map here. So we've got the one that we were testing with where we got nearly, well, 900 megabits and sometimes 800, sometimes 600. Um, though 
mainly in the 700, 800 megabit range. Uh, there, we're now here. So it's going through a single skin brick wall and then going through an external wall. Uh, potentially is also going through me because I'm standing vaguely in the way. Um, let's see what we get. Let's double check. I'm on the Pixel 8. I am connected to the one that's called 7C and 7C is this one. Let's see what speeds we get out of it through the Wi-Fi mesh on the first hop. It's not so bad. 300 megabits per second download and about 200 megabits per second on the upload. We will uh, give it a few more tries as well, as you saw with the, uh, the main one. Wireless can be variable and unpredictable. So we'll do uh, several of these tests and just see how it goes. And then we will go off to the one which is through um, a breeze block wall and then another breeze block wall. Oh, drop down there, gone to only 150. No obvious reason. Let me try moving where I am standing, just in case that makes any difference. Back up to the 300-ish, so I don't think me moving made a difference there. But there we go. That's the performance on the first hop. Now let's go to the second hop. Here we are in a much darker room further into the house, and this is the final hop over here, one, uh, 1F4. So if I do pixel 8, should say I'm connected to 1F4, which I am. So we're now going from my phone onto this, through the Wi-Fi to the one that is in the kitchen, and then through the external wall to the one that is in my office. So 100 megabits per second on the download on that first test. And about 100 megabits per second on the upload. Let's do several more of these. Another 100 megabit. And surprisingly low on that one on the upload of 30 megabits per second. So a lot of people are quite surprised how moving wireless stuff just a small distance can make quite a big difference to speed and um, potentially reliability if you're right on the edge of reception. So I'm going to move this to as far as I can on the edge of the table and uh, let's see whether that makes any difference to the speed we receive. So Oh, yeah. oh, that's a good demonstration. Just that small move from here to here, so it's less than a metre, has reduced the speed by about half. Um, and I mean, look at the upload speed. That is vastly reduced. We're now only getting 12 megabits per second on the upload. So let's try that a few more times just to be sure. But yeah, just be aware that even really small changes, so somebody moving something on a desk or even putting something down on a desk so that it's in the way between the uh, mesh node and the one that it's trying to communicate with, small changes like that can make a surprising and uh, frustrating difference to the speed you get. Although, again, wireless is variable, so we're now back up to 100 megabit somehow um, on the download, but the upload still really bad. So that's the performance that you get on these Mercusis. Uh, what is it? It's an AX1800 H70X mesh system. Hopefully the video has been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thanks very much. Also, have a look in the description for a link to a video which I will have made about the app and all of the functions that you can do within the app and basically going through 
as much of the app as I can. Thanks very much.